Hi, this is Dennis with CFO on a Go, Sage Partner, Sage 100 Contractor today. Hey, I had a couple questions in regarding price, parts prices and takeoff of parts for our basic estimating module. And so I figured I'd record a video so I could share it with a lot of other people. And maybe some things that you guys already know, uh, maybe something already brand new for you. So uh, first question was, how easy is it to update prices? And so pretty simple. A menu option says add update prices. You know, first time through the system, or maybe first time you get a new vendor, uh, you can get an Excel spreadsheet from them. You'll select that source file, and then you're going to map his columns to your col to the fields in Sage 100. So, the part number, the description, the alpha part number, which is his part number, uh, the cost code you want it to go to, the cost type. And, you know, you can go down this whole thing here. But uh, the more you map the first time, the easier it is. Later, you won't have to go through. The second thing that may happen is you've got an increase from one of your suppliers and says, hey, uh, I have a new price list for you. So we're going to match the alpha part number that we have on file, right? Because remember, we loaded that with the original parts. Uh, I'm going to then do that. I'm going to update the vendor price and select that source file. Again, map in the fields, uh, add update parts. Uh, it's pretty simple, guys. Uh, just make sure you map the right field to the right field and... Uh, you won't have any issues at all. So it's pretty simple update prices, monthly, quarterly, uh, as you get those from your different vendors. The next question I had um, was, can I have multiple prices for vendors? So let me go, whoops, let me go into um, here, and let's go find the part that I just updated, 1510. So this is a flat four-inch color, right? If I go into uh, cost, my default cost that I want to use in all of my bids is $1.01. Uh, I want to mark that up 20% from what my cost is. So this is what the price that would be going to the sales price. In this case, I have four vendors. These are the prices from those vendors. This is who I like to buy them from, well, even though he's not the lowest. Um, these two people down here are the lowest. But this is my preferred vendor. You know, and then I can change preferences as I go along. You know, one vendor uh, might be servicing me better, so I may want to change the preference on that. But the bottom line is I, I have a preferred vendor. He's at a dollar. Uh, who knows why? Maybe he's got better quality. Maybe he's always on time. Maybe he always has stuff in stock and not back ordered. But he's my preference. And so uh, there's that. And then we have different prices, okay? So if I go into an actual estimate. Which I got one open down here, so just give me one second to go grab it here. So in this case, there's that part number that we were just looking at, and right now it's brought in the default cost. So one of the things I can do is I come up to my update button, and I say update this grid. I don't want to update the whole estimate, just this grid. And I, what it says is update my prices from the parts database. And so in this case, I want to use the lowest cost vendor. And I'm just going to put in yes there. And now you'll see that it's put in 95 cents and the vendor's Home Depot. And so now, in this case, if I wanted to buy these 500 plants, they're 95 cents and it's going to issue a purchase to Home Depot. If he's got a special for the day and it's 94, uh, I can just override that. So I have a preference if you look up here, update the grid, prices from the parts. I can use the default cost, the billing cost, the average cost or the lowest cost, or my preferred vendor and his cost. And so every estimate, you have those choices to use pricing. So um, it may depend on who the client is, uh, but you have those five, those four or five choices there uh, for pricing. In addition, if I know, uh, well, if I don't know the part number, you know, because I'm um, uh, having a bad day, I could just come in here and put a star and type in flat and hit my F4, and it pulls up everything in my parts database that had the word flat in it. And so some of it's like we wanted, flats for color, but it also brings up, you know, grates that are flat green or flat black. So it's just matching the word. You could do the same thing on, um, type in, uh, I don't even know how much, what's going to come up here. But if I type in uh, star three quarters, uh, oops, if I hit the right key, it would have worked. So star three quarters and I hit my F4 key these are all of the pieces and pipes and fittings I have that are three quarter inch and now I can narrow it down right three quarter inch elbow three quarter inch T 
and filter down but it's all off of that wild card which is the star the asterisk and then I can filter that down to find whatever I'm looking at so that is the tip of the day uh, for uh, some of the tips in estimating for looking for parts uh, you know wild carding them a lot of people forget that that's available and also the ability to have multiple prices uh, for each of those things and multiple vendors that you can choose from and how simple it really is to update uh, prices as long as you get the data in the right format from your vendors uh, it's pretty simple I mean literally the first time it's gonna take you a little while the second time literally minutes if if not less than that to update prices so thanks for listening again CFO on the go we're Sage business partner I service over 1500 uh, clients nationwide for the Sage 100 contractors thank you